View Standing Committee meeting to order. Uh, I am joined by Councillor Driscoll and Councillor Green. Um, the first item on the agenda appears to be uh, a new contract with VO Rides. Is there someone uh, that can speak to that item? Hi, Councillor. It's uh, Corey Dunham. I see that Neil is not on here, so I can fill in for him. So this is a new contract um, with a company, VO Ride, um, to take the place of our bike share program that we had with Gotcha. Um, we had, you know, uh, RFP committee interviewed. Uh, we got a number of applications interviewed. Two of the applicants um, and the committee really felt that VO Ride um, was in a better position to offer us this. Program, they're also used to coming in. They're accustomed to coming into municipalities. There's Neil um, once in situations where gotcha has not been successful on taking over their program. So um, we're pretty excited and confident that that VO ride will uh, take us forward in, in the next step for bike share. But I'll let Neil. Answer any questions folks might have. Yeah, sorry about the. Uh, slight delay. Um, it's tough to find the link in all these invites. That's okay. I, I did my best impression of you as I could, Neil. <laughs> um, so this item is, as I'm sure Corey already discussed, um, entering into a contract with Veil Ride. They went through our selection committee. We put out the RFP just about two months ago for shared micro mobility services, and that's just a fancy way of what everyone calls bike share now, and it also includes scooters. So while we're not gonna start rolling out scooters uh, day one, we just wanna have that option built in there. Veo Ride checks all the boxes. They've been uh, around and established for a very long time. What we like about them is that they're not a venture capital firm, and they've shown some serious stability, um, which, which is a breath of fresh air after um, our previous operator. Um, so, if there's any questions, happy to answer those, but that's the, the uh, basic rundown. So, Neil, I guess my first question is, is this the same? In theory, is it the same type of program? Like, these are same types of bikes that are not motorized or anything like that, correct? They're pretty much the same equipment. There is an electric component, so there's a battery on board similar to the other ones, but uh, you have to pedal. You got to put in the work to get the thing going. Um, and I also should have stated that this comes, this contracts, no cost to the city. We're not putting anything in here. We're simply allowing them to offer the service. Um, are there any other questions from my colleagues on this one? Just say as someone who is on the, uh. The committee that you know, I felt Veo was very. Um, you know, they had a lot of straight answers to our questions, and you know, most of my prerogative was making sure that we didn't have a repeat of the gotcha situation, and uh, they definitely um, responded in ways that gave me a lot more confidence. And as uh, all the points Neil made, that um, they've been around a while and not venture capital, and they had a, they have a, a business formula that seems to work a lot better. So, uh, feel very hopeful that uh, this will be the right choice. Okay, I'll make a motion to put this on the agenda. I get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The, the next item on the agenda is uh sewer recon. Is there someone that can see that? I know counselors, uh Commissioner Robinson over at DPW. Uh this is our uh Reconstruction our sanitary storm sewer reconstruction uh, CIP. Um, we use these funds for projects that are, you know, that we have to outsource because it's too big for us to do in house. Um, so it, it, it's definitely beneficial for, for large uh, sewer issues. Uh, Commissioner, do we have a list of the sewers that uh, I assume we probably have a list going of ones that need to get uh, 
done, you know, immediately? Is there is there a list that you could share with us of um, what what sewers we're going to be working on? Yeah, we have a rolling list. Uh, we usually try to do them in house, uh, which try to as as best we can. Um, but we do have a list. Yes, I can yeah, send could, it. To you. Yeah, if you could just share it to us before the uh, the study session, I, I'd appreciate it. And if you could just share it with the whole council, because I'm sure. Um, other district councilors would probably like to see um, what areas and which sewers we're redoing. Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, any other questions from my colleagues on this one? Okay, hearing none, uh, I'm going to make a motion to put this on the agenda. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the uh, next one is uh, the street sweeping program. Uh, you could yep, speak this, to that. This is me again. Uh, this is our annual uh, street sweeping program that we do annually. Um, uh, you know, we we street sweep uh, curb streets, which are approved streets, uh, as you know. Um, so this is our annual program that allows us to do that. I believe uh, taxpayers that live on those streets pay for those services. Um, so this is this is very beneficial. Uh, any any other questions on this? I saw you included the list of the streets on there. I appreciate it. All right, uh, make a motion to put this on the agenda. Can I get a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, the next uh, appears the next several items are engineering. Is there someone that can speak to those items? Yes. Good afternoon, counselors. This is Mary Robinson, city engineer. Um, the first one is the um, tip project for the pedestrian safety action plan. We're asking to come to you for the construction and construction inspection money for a cost um, of 1.304 million. This is fully 100% reimbursable um, with federal money. Um, we're going to be using this money to update, upgrade our uncontrolled pedestrian crosswalks. So that's intersections that have no stop signs and no traffic signals. And also approximately 60 um, signalized intersections. Are you guys still there? Yep, okay, sorry. I was wrong here. Um, so the improvements will be uh, at the, at the, um, Uncontrolled sections would be additional warning signage, advanced warning signage, and improved pavement markings. Um, and at the signalized intersections, it'll consist of pedestrian signal head, um, countdown timers, accessible pedestrian signals, um, signage revisions, and then improvements to the crosswalks. So the as I said, we're doing all the uncontrolled pedestrian crossings within the city and then doing uh, approximately 60 um, signalized intersections. There, in total, there's about 30 signalized intersections. Um, so we have prioritized the downtown ones plus some additional um, crossings within the city. And we do have a phase two project that we're going to be starting um, later this year to try and get more of those 300 crossings done. Also a tip project. Any uh, questions for my colleagues on, on this item? Okay, hearing none, uh, I'm going to make a motion to put this on the agenda. Can I get a second? Second. All, right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Uh, Mary, next item. Next item is our another tip project, our creek walk improvements and creek walk maintenance bridge project. 
we're only coming to you right now for um, $10,000 for right of way. This would be 80% reimbursable with tip funding. Um, there's a small section of right of way needed um, from the rapid response parcel, which is adjacent to the creek walk maintenance bridge. Okay, any questions for my colleagues on this one? All right, hearing none, I'll make a motion to put this on the agenda. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Okay, uh, next item. Next item is uh, related to solar street paving improvements. Um, which we're about to begin construction. Uh, the state is also doing a PSAP project, um, but since we are working right at the intersection of solar and bear, they've asked us to do some pedestrian signal improvements at this intersection to, to work more effectively. So they're willing to reimburse us the additional $40,000 for these improvements that they were going to do. Um, so this is 100% reimbursable. The 40, the additional $40,000. Okay, uh, any questions from my colleagues on this one? <clears throat> okay, uh, make a motion to put this one on the agenda. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Second. Yep, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and uh, last item for engineering. The last item is a national grid temporary use and access agreement. Um, I'm not sure if Jessica, I had to revise this letter um, to change some of the clauses and I also attached the map showing the parcels, but basically they want to national grid is doing a um, charging vault project with, which is. Basically, um, I guess they're putting some. Robot robotics in some of their larger gas mains, and they need a charging vaults in order to charge these robots. Um, so they're asking to use three of our parcels temporarily during construction. Um, there's two parcels side by side at 624 to 630 and 632 to 634 Midland Ave. And then the third parcel is at the corner of Salina Street and Martin Luther King West. Um, it's the address is 1350 to 72 South Salina Street and Martin Luther King. Um, this is a little bit different for us because it's not the right of way, it's um, city owned parcels. Uh, so we've come up with provisions for the temporary use of these parcels and also we're planning to charge them um, the two parcels on Midland Ave, they anticipate using for six weeks. So we're charging them a cost of $3,200. Um, and at the parcel on Salina Street and Martin Luther King, they're proposing to use for 12 weeks. So we're charging them $6,000 for the use of the parcels. We came up with the fees um, from Dave Clifford, Commissioner of Assessment. Um, we've also included a provision if they need to use additional time, use these parcels for a longer period of time that we would prorate the additional cost and they'd have to re uh, pay us for that additional cost. Um, the parcel on uh, South Salina and Martin Luther King, we have advised them they need to maintain access to the driveway on Martin Luther King because there's some um vendors that are you know food trucks or other um other businesses that are working off of that parcel so they are maintaining access to the driveway there for for the uh various vendors that are going to be utilizing a different area of that parcel um they're only using 30 feet by can't read if it's 82 feet or 62 feet um, so the remainder of the parcel will be able to be utilized by the vendors that are being set up there. And the use of the um, parcels is really for
or staging area for equipment, not materials or spoils. I, I assume, and correct me if I'm wrong, that, that with this agreement that we're, we're that the city's indemnified because I, I assume the equipment is probably the, like, the equipment that they're using just in case someone's, you know, hurt on the job there that, you know, doesn't fall back on us, correct? Yes, we have the uh, indemnification clause in the agreement that law department um, reviewed and approved. And they have to provide uh, insurance as well. Okay, uh, any questions from my colleagues? Okay, um, I'll make a motion to put this on the agenda. Can I get a second? Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, and uh, it appears the last two items here are water. Uh, is there someone that can uh, speak to those two? Yes, good afternoon. This is Commissioner AWOL, Water Department. Uh, item 17 is regarding the uh, authorization of the project and approved the sale of bonds in the amount of $650,000 for the chemical feed replacement system in Skinny Atlas Lake. Currently, we are utilizing chlorine gas to, for disinfection purposes at the lake. We want to convert to a solution, which is much less uh, hazardous and toxic. Um, any questions on that? Okay, uh, hearing no questions, I'll, I'll make a motion to put this on the agenda. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and uh, right. last one for the item 18 is the similar sale of uh, to authorize the project and sale of bonds to begin the design of the Mosley Drive pump station replacement, uh, along with the Winkward, Winkworth pump station upgrade. Uh, we'll also include in this project the replacement of the transmission main along Sunnycrest and install an additional transmission main to connect two different pressure zones along Glen Cove Road. So this is a pretty big um, upgrade project. Uh, we're going out for design at this point and hopefully for construction next year. Any question on that? Yeah, what uh, what type of um, what type of improvements can we expect to see in this in this change? I know we we have a lot of water pressure issues in that that part of the city. Um, will this uh, remedy that or what other possible benefits will this project have? So yes, you're right on track. This one of the benefits we'll have is that right now this pump station currently only serves in case there's a fire to push extra pressure into that district. Uh, we want to convert it to a, what do they call VFD, variable frequency drive that can add pressure to that district based on consumption. The other um, concern with this pressure district is that it's it's two separate pressure districts that's linked by one, one uh, run of pipe, one run of 10 inch pipe along Sunnycrest. So if that pipe breaks, we have a little backup to interconnect these two pressure zones. So putting an additional one on Glen Cove and replacing the old one on Sunnycrest will provide redundancy in our backup between the two pressure districts and help equalize pressure. All right, so how, how much of uh, Eastwood would this apply to? Would this be just relevant for those areas or will that be for the whole like will this will this regulate the bulk of the neighborhood uh, or, or how far you know how I, I just don't know how these water systems work how many streets or or you know how far will this improvement uh, affect quality of water pressure so this will assist um, some of Eastwood just because of the topography there's a what we call intermediate pressure zone and that intermediate pressure zone is approximately from uh, Plymouth Drive all the way towards Thompson Road between James and Caleb. 
That whole section over there is part of the intermediate high zone, and that's connected through one force or one one pipeline through Sunnycrest, and the other component of the intermediate high zone runs from um, Lincoln Park to almost everything north up to um, Court Street and all the way east to Schiller Park. So you got a big chunk in there that, that this will help with. That's great, great news. Great to hear that. And and how long, so this is just a scoping phase, did you say, Commissioner? It, it, it's not the actual construction yet, but it'll. You, you're looking at it, is that what's happening? So we've done our evaluation reports. Uh, right now, we wanna go out for design purposes so we can start um, hoping to grab some of these stimulus funds that are out there for these improvement projects that we can go to construction next year. Great, that's exciting stuff. Any other questions? And, and, and Commissioner, how long do they usually take once you start the project? How long does the process take? The design process or the construction process? The construction process. Uh, this type of project, we have a pump, two pump stations we're looking at and two transmission mains. They can kind of be, uh, be worked on in parallel, typically we allow six to eight months for construction. Some of that is dependent on materials and you know how long lead times are on some of these items. We're seeing right now with the pump station components, it's a several month lead time. We'd probably be looking at you know like a prepackaged pump station where we would build the foundation and they would come and set the pump station right on the foundation. That way, it's it's a little quicker and less invasive in the neighborhood. So it all depends on construction materials, how long the lead times are. And I take this doesn't interfere with much of water supply at all, does it? Do no, our goal is to build the one, you know, when we get to construction, our goal would be to uh, build the new transmission main on Glencoe before we would replace the one on Sunnycrest. That way we always have connection between the two districts. Okay, and and then sim similar approach would be used for the Winkworths, right? So for the Winkworth pump station, all it is is we're adding a redundant pump into that pump station. Everything else in that pump station has been relatively new, but we, uh, when that was designed, it didn't have a backup pump for that district. So we're adding a, a secondary pump that can serve as a backup, and we can alternate pump run times. So we don't overrun one pump. Okay, and again, that doesn't that that will not affect much of of the supply in the transition, right? Nope, it shouldn't affect much at all. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion to put in the agenda. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, that seems to be all the items. That'll conclude uh, the standing committee meeting for the DPW. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice day.